They'll be calling you a radical. We're going to have a talk today about how many people Fukushima have killed. This is the one thing that I've learned. People will get adamant with you. They'll come right out. Oh, Fukushima's killed no one. What? Because CNN told you? I mean, really. CNN told you that it killed no one. The IEA told you it killed no one. This is the same people that told you Chernobyl killed 4,000 people. And people say, well, didn't it? Wow. I'm going to tag some things. First, I want to I'll lay some foundation. Chernobyl has killed millions. People say, oh, Kevin's exaggerating. Kevin's over the top. Let's talk about credibility. First off, let's talk about credibility. One, my father was an atomic veteran. Not one of your typical atomic, special forces marine. I grew up out here on the desert, on the rim of the Great Basin. In the height of, everybody knew what a downwinder was. Scott Matheson, on and on and on and on. I was a, I was a young student who was very adept at sucking up information. I was obsessed with it. This was the home of Stegner. This was the home of Abby. This was the home of all the power. This literally was ground zero for the anti-nuclear movement as I was growing up. My father, the human guinea pig drafted Marine, my two uncles who raised me. High, high brass in the Air Force. High, high brass in the Army. Omaha Beach, D-Day, is about as decorated as managed you can ever get. Other uncle, fighter pilot. Out here on the huge giant ranch, I tell everybody, watch the Misfits. The scene where they're out roping. That's right where I grew up in that type of dynamic out here. Right here, right here where I live, right here. And guys really did blow horses like that. And my dad and my uncles hated guys like that. They would call them drugstore cowboys. As I grew up, my father was about as, I look back on it, he was as magnificent human rights activist as gets. My grandparents on both sides, Abraham Hunsaker IV, Abraham Hunsaker I was the greatest humanitarian in the history of Utah, bar none. No one's even close. No one. As we were taught, as I was taught as a boy, that you were not born just to suck air. You were not born just this gift that life gives you, this beautiful, magnificent, incredible, beautiful gift that we have. This gift to look at the sunshine, these beautiful mountains, these flowers, the people, these beautiful people that you get to talk to and meet, these wonderful children, this wonderful place, this amazing place, that it was not something that you were just born to suck the resources out of, I, as I call them, air suckers. We were taught, I was taught so different that it is your duty as a person to give back to the earth, to give back to humanity, to do your part, to propel humanity forward, to give up of yourself in exchange for all this precious, precious, precious life that we're giving. I was a very sick kid. My, father, my mother was 105, petite, curved up female. She was a pinup artist, Woodbury pinup artist. Everything himself used to say about her. Not only could she draw magnificently, she was one of the best I ever seen. She could have been her own model. She got pregnant with boy girl twin. Didn't know there was twins. It all almost killed her, but we were preemies in 1960. To be a preemie in 1960. Well, my father had been at ground zero, completely lit up like a Christmas tree. I mean lit up. Of course, guys conceived later. It did things to me. There's no doubt it did things to me. As I evolved, I was obsessed with this. I dug in, I dug in, I dug in. He gets leukemia later. You know, I mean, in the absolute prime, the most healthy man, I mean, you're... I like how people say, oh, it's thinning the hurt, it will take out the weak. <laughs> Let's see, the man who won the Iron Man died in our hospital. The, world, the greatest triathlete in the world is in there right now on death's doorstep. That is bullshit, hyperbole bullshit. People f go along, nuclear fall is young. The nuclear thesis is young. I mean, Madame Curie wasn't he? I mean, 100 years. A little over 100 years, these hypotheses, but I equate it like this. When the plague of 1918 happened, San Francisco was one of the number one ones, just like California, in denial, in denial, and the governments knew. And they kept it under the mantra of the economy. 
under the hypothesis of the economy, the economy, the economy. The high, hit, hit. And I'll say this to all you who have covered this up. Yeah, you got away with Chernobyl because everybody got their mind on Wall Street, you know, all over the world. They paid the price. And oh, did they pay the price when the truth came out. They couldn't hide it no more. And then the populace says, what, you lied to us the whole time? What do you mean? You know, it's a sacred honor to be a public figure. And there's where the American populace has fallen for all this, the world populace, because it's betrayal. It's hard to accept that our own government and our own so-called people of power do not have honor and dignity, and it's pure betrayal. It's hard to accept that. As we grew up in a wonderful America in the 50s and 60s. The baby, we all grew up in this incredible place. It's, it, a, nuclear is like the economy. We've tried this Ayn Rand, free market fairy tales, got rid of protectionism, experiment for the first time in American history from 80 to present, really 94 to present, until we accept that these policies failed, until we accept that nuclear was a giant failure and it is annihilating us, until we can come out of denial and accept that these policies have failed. What's going to happen? It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. That's where we're at. Fukushima, my estimates, my work, I estimate it's killed right around 200,000 people in North America right now, and it's going to kill millions. People say, what are you talking about? Oh, you're over the top. Think about the other side. What do they talk about? Zero? <laughs> Zero. I'll lay some art. Look, I've been eat, sleep, drinking this. Now I say I sleep with it. As you guys know, even right here, proof right here. You want to talk of credibility? Let's see. The first day that Fukushima, I go crazy. I go nuts to explain just why that. Find somebody else who's doing that. Find one person that was doing that for weeks. Everybody says, oh, I knew this. They knew that already. Okay, okay, fine. Show me. Just please show me. Okay, I told you to get out of silver for $45. I told you to get out of gold at $1,900 on the day right at the top. I told you to buy the Apple call derivative at $480 right before I got cancer for $30. It ended up being worth $6,000 a piece. Over and over and over. Credibility. I told you Strauss Kahn was innocent. I told you, you know, it's been Cassandra like it's even freaked me out. So go through. Go through. I mean, I thought credibility and trust was earned. But apparently, CNN, the most trusted news, they tell you, so you trust. It's like, oh, zero. Why, CNN told you that. The IEA, who's the World Health Organization, who is the IEA, which is the nuclear industry, is the greatest cash cow in human history. There is no overhead on the nuclear the American populace builds it, the American populace ensures it, the world pop they back World Price Cooper, all these other different acts. The overhead, I mean, remember clear back this is oh you put a pillow in the gas tank of your car, it's the most revenue, it's sexy, oh, you know, the bikini. Just the fact that the bikini atolls, Chernobyl, and the Fukushima air are inhabitable forever is enough. It, that should be enough. You would think that was enough. If you went back to Einstein, Sokarov, all of them, you would think and told them this way. As we were told in the 70s, remember? This cannot happen, will not happen. It's impossible. We don't want to hear it from you, anti nuclear ab. It's impossible. We can't have a meltdown. It's impossible. Our safety checks and everything's in place. It's impossible. Can't happen. You know? Can't happen. Well, four gigantic major ones three at Fukushima and Chernobyl, which are gigantic. Not to mention the thousands and thousands of little ones. Cancer is perfectly 100% correlated with nuclear fallout. You can look at all the, the data exists. Now, on ecology units, let's talk. Let's see. Oh, what? Ke oh, 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 Kevin's got AML leukemia? Not a, a, acute. I've been in the acute bone marrow transplant center for 21 months. Given too much. Oh, after he said it was going to give you leukemia? Yeah, after. One day in very critical condition. I've been in the unit. I've been there. I'm working with the team of could be the best team of oncologists in the world. I see it with my own eyes. Southern Utah, the amount of, as they took more fall, the number that's in there, there's a very small population of people in Southern Utah, giant population in a hospital dying. Young girls, post Fukushima. I'm not the prosecuting attorney in there. They get tired of hearing me. I know for a fact it's, it's, we had the most death we've had in the history of the hospital, by the way, with the best results hospital in the world, in the history of the hospital. Cancer is spiking. Seattle, spiking, they say, the biggest in the world. I'll tag this from the young oncologist. So much data has been out there, but you say, oh, no, it's not killed anyone. Remember this. When the plume went up, 
Let's make sure this is still growing. Let's make sure. I've had troubles with this camera. Oh yeah. Sorry. When the plume went up, remember this. We spent how many billions of dollars? We've had RadNet, the radiation detecting network all over the country. We spent, we bolstered it after 9-11. Again, Megan Rice as she breaks in to prove that they're just squandering the money. This is on so many levels such an incredible lie. And people say, oh, conspiracies. You know, hello, Germany. U.S. spying on you? Oh, 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 God, I can't believe And I will say this about people that blow the whistle. Bradley Manning. Look what we've done to Bradley Manning. For the truth. Megan Rice says it beautifully. The truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. She, I don't hear her talking about Jesus and, you know, religion because she's a nun. She doesn't take that road. She talks about the truth. She says in the interview, you mean tell me 311 million people had it wrong? She says, you said it. You know, as we talked today, Thomas Ackerman and I, as we're working on our project together, as you can tell, I says, when Van Gogh was painting with the yellow, we, he and I were speaking about this, what was the population in his community, you know, in Europe over there? You know, maybe 100,000, maybe 200,000. He stood alone, his brother, that was it. If he painted today and was doing that, that yellow, in a country of 300, did you think it still would be just one person? I do. It is. Harriet Beecher Stowe when she was going crazy, Tom Brown when he's going crazy, so many people to be contrarian in this culture because what CNN didn't tell you. Oh no, CNN did tell me, didn't kill anybody. Oh, the tuna have no season. Just like that we were told that Lance Armstrong didn't dope. What a conspiracy. Just like whistleblowers like Bradley Manning. You can't handle the truth. You people don't want the truth. You're so freaking postured and groomed into the lie thesis that you want to, you'll fight to the death through your own death. You will lay down your life as you're dying with leukemia, you're laying with leukemia. You will lay down your freaking life in denial because you want, you can't handle the truth and it is the truth you can't handle the truth. And CNN knows it, Fox knows it, the machine knows it. And if you want to know the history of America and know how we got there, simply as I said, our economic pop, follow the path of tariffs in this country, what the inception of this country was. Radnet did not work. How is that possible? Gina McCarthy, head of Radnet, who is now head of the EPA. How is that possible? We spent billions, it just didn't work. Oh, what do you mean? It did work the first two days, and then all the sites were taken down. Oh, the United States government would do that. Oh, the United States government would spy on Germany. As Hayden said on 60 Minutes this morning, or meet the nation, or whatever, or crash the nation, or meet the freaking conspirators, whatever they've termed these shows. Well, the Fourth Amendment doesn't protect under international law. Yeah, but it does here. Oh, we want to talk about the Second Amendment fairy tales. Oh, really? Do you think our forefathers would believe that it was going to be a $9 freaking AK-47 made? You know, I think everybody should have a drone. The Ninth Amendment gives the ability to change. It's been amended 17 times. What, huh? American populace is in a drool stupor. And they will fight you to their own detriment. It is Uncle Tom's cabin on Balco. It went down. We know the data. There's been networks of freelancers. You think these 728 videos of mine? Well, this has been a tireless war. Guys like Patrick Cantor, guys like Shane Russell, guys like Marine Burke, guys like Patty, da girls like Patty Davis, and Marine Burke, Gene Stone. These are people that have tired. This has been grassroots investigative journalists on Balco. We have done so much, the hours that have been put into this thing, do not get, I mean, the freedom of information, this stuff's there. Do you know what kind of work it takes, Patrick Henry and Shane Russell and Marine Bridge, do you know how many hours they have put in, the sacrifice they have made for this? This is right here. The study out of the Pacific Ocean. Oh, no. Remember? No international teams even over there. Just, and I finally get it uncovered. Boom. Here's the studies. The last study. Right here. Right here. It's the last study. April 13th. June 11th. It says right there, June 11th, the international team, which consists of Europeans and Japanese, where's the Americans again? Where's the Americans? Oh, they're too busy spying on the Germans and the Spaniards and the French. They're too busy. Having, well, no, no, I take back the French are in bed with the United States because they're nuclear, nuclear, vet. Well, they'll, they'll start fighting as the funnel gets tighter and tighter and tighter. The wealth, redistribution of wealth gets smaller and smaller and smaller. A nuclear plant is the greatest cash cow in the United States in world history. There's no overhead. They skim the profits. Look who owns them. Everybody says, oh, they're public utilities. That was deregulated. Thank you, fairy tale John Birch Reagan tells. They all got deregulated again. 
the path of America, the greatest, strongest middle class in world history, dissolved, mission accomplished. Fact of the matter is, the plume, out of the air when it blew up their three, it was massive, gigantic. It rained over us. Nuclear fall is cumulative. It lays in the bone marrow. We all have Chernobyl. We all have to, it is 100% correlated. It is the degeneration mutation of the gene, the cell. It is at the cellular level. It lays on the bone marrow. That's why it affects girls for early thyroid cancer. We know 28% of females that went up in the night. We know baby mortality rate in California, Washington went up. We know these factually. We know that the cancer rates are spiking in Salt Lake City, in Seattle, in Vancouver, Canada. We know all over the United States. It's where the wind blows. It's where it rains the next day. Richard Miller's magnificent work, Under the Cloud, John Gah, Poison Power. These da the data is there. It's right there hiding in plain sight. So you want to come to me and say, oh, Fukushima. Anybody who says that, you might as well just staple on your head. I am one of the ignorant, stupidest fuckers that ever walked. I am a dogmatic, ignorant, dumb fucker. That's why you stamp it on your fucking head and walk around. And you fucking drink the Kool-Aid. Keep drinking. Keep drinking right to your grave as your loved ones, as you don't even care about your loved ones. Nuclear power, the freaking replacement for dirty coal. The replacement for dirty coal is clean coal. It's sun, 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 solar, solar. It's been there right there the whole time. J.P. Morgan owns songs. Apple. Oh, Lisa Jackson is the new head of Apple now, environmental. The worst energy secretary in the history of mankind. Oh, BP, she let him off the hook. Oh, British Petroleum? Uh, uh, kiss the ring, kiss the ring. Oh, oh, you know, Pierce Morgan moves on over. The new head of NBC News, another Brit. I mean, it's all, you know, kiss the ring. Oh, what? They hate terrorists? The inception of the country was the Coast Guard and Alexander Hamilton and terrorists. McKinley tariffs, all tariffs, the New Deal tariffs, even bolstered tariffs, the greatest, strongest middle class, unwinding, simple concept, usury laws, tariffs, and antitrust laws. Honestly, that's simple. Tell American good grass, but this stripping away, everything Ross Perot said, you'll hear a giant, you want to compete with 30 cents an hour, which they say that's wage. Apple says there's wage inflation going on in China. They went to 30 cents an hour. And too, too many of them are jumping out because they don't like the nets there when they're killing themselves. You know, they need pillows in the nets. They moved to Indonesia now. They don't even pay them that. It's fucking sickening. My data shows, as in the hospital, and I've quizzed these guys, what the increase is post Fukushima. As I've correlated with the Seattle Hospital. As I've correlated with Vancouver, I've done a lot of work. I'm compiling. I'm doing this on my own. As I'm using Patrick Henry's magnificent work, Shane Russell's magnificent work. We're working on this because no one else is going to tell you, oh, it didn't kill me because CNN told us so, because Fox News said so, because the IEA said so, which is the only, because the UN said so, the UN who's, the UN's branch. They are the nuclear industry. Hello. Hello. Nuclear fallout is directly 100% correlated with AML leukemia, acute. And you think, oh, you know, it's curable. We've got cures for cancer now. We got, oh, really? Huh. Go in one of your bone marrow transplant centers. I've been in there. There's one right there. Incredible healthy people. It's a, and let me tell you too, it's not a pretty death. You know, we have videos. Dana let us go into the room. I'll, I'll tag the videos. Her brother watches these videos. She let us go in there and videotape. Her last days. They call it the good fight for a reason. And I'm fighting because we weren't born to suck up air. You, you don't have a God gift, right? That you were born onto this earth. All this beauty that this world has to give, the joys of being able to sleep and dream, and to get up and see the sun, and listen to the birds sing, and the trees, you know, and beautiful designed automobiles, and oh yeah, I forgot, Paris, we got rid of those. All these beauties, to be able to drink a glass of water when it's real hot and you're thirsty, <sighs> to be able to kiss a pretty girl, those things are not to breathe clean air, to look at a snow-capped mountain, to watch that ocean current roll, to take your grandson fishing, all these beautiful things, to hold hands with your granddaughter and go for a walk through the woods. You weren't born with those. To eat a hamburger, to suck up food, to do whatever. You think them was your God-given inveterate rights. They're the right you were born with. 
They weren't. I, I was raised a completely different way. And go ahead, you believe them. You believe CNN. You believe the same people that told you that Pat Tim would die in about freaking killing those freaking terrorists. You go ahead and believe what Colin Powell stood in front of the UN and says they got weapons of mass destruction. You go ahead and believe Dick Cheney when Saddam is freaking evil, wants to freaking come into your bedroom at night and freaking care. Who's the terrorist? Dick Cheney's the terrorist. You go ahead, the people that arrest Cindy Sheehan. You go ahead, you believe those people. You the bully the people that sucked you into this war that took life and limb and treasury from you. The crash the United States tower. None of them stood. CNN, the propaganda, the New York Times, the Washington Post, on and on and on and on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Believe me, there's none of there is no investigative journalist that'll spend well, the, the amount of work that we've put in, our little army, we should be making three, four hundred thousand a year. As I'll be in San Diego the fifteenth. I'm landing at San Diego the 15th. I'll be there at Sanitary Time. I'm going to organize, and we're going to do some serious grassroots activism. We're going to take this to the level. We're going to organize. We're going to plan how we're going to do this. is a post-ignorance, and my movement is a peaceful, loving movement. This is rooted in love, as Megan Rice said. Painting on the back of the Nevada test site map. What words does she use over and over? Simply the truth. Simply the truth. Stay on tune.